The Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG is not awful at the moment. I said not awful. I repeat, it's unbelievable. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. But it does contain the unstoppable dueling wave. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So happy to see each and every one of your faces. Before we get into this video, I just want a real quick shout out the Discord, as always. The Discord is in the description down below. So come over there, join us. We can't wait to see you. We've got our own little alt, uh, ban list, alt format that we run. Uh, we have tournaments every month. It's actually really, really fun. We have our own special ban list where we have the current TCG standard of forbidden, limited, semi-limited, unlimited. We also have three new sections added of limit one, limit five, limit 10, which are sections of cards that are, none of them are at one or two or zero or whatever. They're all on this limit 10 and you can pick 10 total cards from each of this, like you can pick 10 from the limit 10, 5 from the limit 5, and 1 from the limit 1. And then you can't use any other card on that list. It gives hitting decks and cards much more flexibility. So you can actually get these new one card combo decks and hit them without hitting a single card right? You're like, dang, I really like playing Malice. Malice has 18 non-engine slots and it has a bunch of room for a bunch of hand traps. Okay, well, we don't want them to run those hand traps. The deck is really strong with those hand traps. So how do, we, how do we hit them? Do we hit their starters? Do we hit this? Do we hit that? Every card, every deck is a one card combo deck. So what do we do? We just go, okay, well, here's, we haven't hit them obviously yet, but in the future, this is how this would be used. You have the limit 10 where we've put all the best hand traps on there. You got Ash, Nib, Imperm, Valor, Impulse, Purge. Those are all at three. You can run any of them at three, but you can only run 10 total. So what that means is you can run three Imperm, three Ash, three Nib, one Valor, or three Valor, three Imperm, three Ash, one Nib. You run 10 total cards from this. And, and what that does is it functionally limits the power of these one card combo decks. So in the future, you don't have to really hit them. They've already hit. And if if they still can, you can still use the other hand traps that aren't that great, like the Phantasmes, the Ghost Ogres, the more skillful hand traps. And you can still get to that 18 number and it's still fine, but you can't use the top, top, top ones, which makes your deck just that little bit better, which hits its win rate. Now, if decks like Malice or Rizio or whatever in the future are still too good, we put them on this list. And guess what? All of a sudden, you put their main starter at this list. All of a sudden, they're down to seven of the top hand traps, not ten. Put two of their starters, and all of a sudden, they're at four, right? Gives us a lot of flexibility. If that sounds cool to you, sounds like a great idea, and you want to partake in this, please come join us in the description down below. The Discord is lit. Come, introduce yourself. We can't wait to have you. Um, we're a smaller community. It's not like just some giant conglomerate that's 190,000 members. No, it's literally less than 300 members. Come join. Be part of a really cool, uh, small, cool community. Anyway, back to the video. How did we get here? Much hoopla was made about the ineffectiveness of the August ban list, uh, especially by yours truly. But to be fair, the list did something, right? Uh, Snake Eyes was functionally tier zero power level. Maybe not tier zero affordability. But once the list dropped, the list did take tier the, the tier zero Snake Eyes and make them the third or fourth best deck in the format. You Bell and it functionally flipped spots. At a minimum also, it got rid of Appaloosa, which was a scourge on every format for the last, I don't know how many years. Snake Eyes, like I said, went to third or fourth best. Tempai stayed about the same, even with its hits. Now we did dread the release of Rhoda because we knew that once Rhoda released, uh, the Azamina cards would come, boost Snake Eyes back to viability and maybe make a tier zero again. Well, as we see right now, luckily, they aren't tier zero, as we can see reflected in the current meta. It's put them back in the driver's seat, but they're not overbearingly overpowered. Currently, Snake Eyes sits at just 20 south of 20% representation in the current format. Tenpai sits second at 18%. Fire King at 12%, which is nice to see Fire King up. Shout out Ulkanix. And then Ubel at 11%, and then Suterion at 6% to round out the numbers of the top five. This at face value isn't awful. It actually kind of mimics the numbers that we saw during Unchained format. When me and the boys just went to YCS Niagara, we actually were able to find some level of success using our more roguish picks. Except Andre, of course, he used Ubel. But even by these numbers, Ubel is only like the third or fourth best deck in the game. And if things broke a little bit more favorably, we could have taken voiceless, melodious, um, just random decks to a day two position possibly there's five meta viable decks and a bunch of rogue decks that can win and do well so we can't exactly say that this format is trash or whatever other less uh, savory word we'd like to use because it technically it isn't it's not the unchained format of a year ago which was actually one of the best formats voted by so many players i don't know if you've seen the video on hakuna my data he he did a great video about this where he talks about uh, players like voting and like there was a poll done and what format was the best and it was Unchained format by a mile. It's not even close. But this format could be something towards that 
direction. You might not be able to play exactly whatever you'd like, but Ryan Yu did get second place with Sky Strikers, and he even said the deck was kind of bad. Pure Exodia Millennium did get top 32. Like, pure Exodia. These are facts, and I do think that we are harboring a residual hate from Snake Eyes because it's been so good so long, but currently, there is some hope here. There's something that we can work with here. We can polish this turd and get it, make it a slightly shinier turd, as proven on Mythbusters. Do you want to play Fool Loss? You don't want to buy a $200 card, three copies, 600 bucks? You don't have to. You can play Centurion, which is top five deck in the format currently, or Voiceless, one of the more underrated decks in the format, which honestly could be better than a Centurion in this format. Or for the people that, I know this is going to get uh, the uh, video hate bombed and comment, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, but Fluunderies is also an option. You will not lose to Fluoros if you run Fluunderies. And if you're afraid of Perulia, you can literally just side in, uh, cross out, and buy one Perulia, which is very not very expensive. Uh, you have the called by. You have options here. Ash Blossom. You can also summon on your opponent's turn. So there's... A lot of options here. Do you want? Do you have to play 20 hand traps like everyone's trying to stuff in their deck? I'm here to argue that you don't have to. If you have Fool Ross, you can. You probably should. But if you don't, I think a board breaker strategy would be completely fine. When you look at the ultimate end boards that these decks make, they're not that impressive. U Bells is very impressive. But overall, the other decks, even Snake Eyes as Amina, their board is kind of, like, it's it's solid. It's solid. A board breaker should be able to crack that easily. Super Poly. Cooks as Amina decks. U Bell. Loki cooks U Bell too a little bit, right? Dark Ruler paired with anything cooks as does evenly as we saw yasin's top four match in cancun ultimate slayer is insane if you have the extra deck space for it is tenpai giving you trouble side in 2003 staples like wabaku or threatening roar the last one was a joke of course but only a half joke because they actually do work currently the the main degenerate bs about the current format is the fact that everyone has this incessant need to shove in 20 hand traps in their deck i need minimum 13 to 15 to 18 20 hand traps if i don't have it like, I was watching Pac's profile, man, like, oh, I got 18 hand traps, and he sides into, like, six more to get to 24 hand traps. It's ridiculous. But this causes you to brick, needlessly, and it results in non-games, because either you don't draw anything to be able to play, or you just stun your opponent the whole time. Basically, it's just comparing hands, and I don't think hand traps are the right move anyway. In today's day and age, engines are so resilient and so redundant that one or two hand traps, if you run a more gassy build... You can just play through those hand traps. The thing that bricks you is your own hand traps because you're like, God, this card does nothing. And then you get, you go to your opponent, you try to hand trap them. But if they have one more starter than you, they just auto win the game because the moment that gets through, it's over. Maybe, maybe hand traps aren't the, aren't the actual, aren't what's needed in this format. As Amina Snake Eyes, they eat hand trap like it's their job. U Bell literally doesn't care about hand traps. I've hand trapped U Bell like three, three hand traps so many times and they just play through it anyway. And if they do play through it, it's over. You have nothing. You have two cards drawn to a third. Tenpai doesn't even... I don't think he even plays Yu-Gi-Oh. It plays a whole nother game. Two board breakers and a Chandra is auto win anyway. We need to adapt and think outside the box here. But overall, we are on the right track. I don't know what the future will bring with crossover breakers and how good Rizyal will be in the TCG or Malice or the Blue Eye Structure deck down the line in February and how they'll fare here. But we are truly one decent list. And I know we can say this all the time, but we are truly one decent list away from having a really, really cool format. But the question here is now, what do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm onto something here? Is there is the format actually not as bad as people think? think is their potential here and is are we one list away from getting to where we need to go is the format good let me know in the comments down below as exciting as this is we know konami will do something soon that will shove us right back into a tier zero format for another two years just like we have for the last four years thanks for tuning in today was a little shorter video than usual but i just wanted to talk about my observations with the format and i know that this this channel gets uh you know labeled as a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh hater channel or whatever, but it's not a hater channel I just want this game to be good, and when the game is somewhat good or on the right track, I'd like to actually point that out and not just be a doomer all the time. While I still have you, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, because it really does help. The support does help me get these videos out to you, and don't forget to check this video out. Guys, have a good one, and I'll see you as always.